Welcome to Sir Wins Accounting Lectures. Today, magkakaroon tayo ng pen and paper video problem solving patungkol sa Lecture 05, Investment in Bonds, Term Bonds, Effective Interest Method of Amortization. Actually, nasa description ng video lecture na ito yung mismong problem under discussion. Kung gusto mong sagutan ng solo at balikan ang lecture na ito kapag tapos ka na, mas mabuti. Kasi, ang accounting ay natututunan not by mere listening but actually by you doing the problem solving. Pero kung may sagot ka na nga, simulan na natin. Okay, so again, Lecture 05, Investment in Bonds, Term Bonds. The method for amortization is effective interest method. Here is our problem. On January 1, 2020, Like a Up Company purchased bonds with face amount of 2 million for 1,900,500 including transaction cost of 100,500 to be held as financial asset at amortized cost. The bonds mature on December 31, 2022 and pay interest of 8% annually every December 31 with a 10% effective yield. So here is the requirements. Prepare a table of amortization of the discount. And then, prepare journal entries for 2020, 2021, and 2022. So basically, effective method ang ginagamit okay, sa amortization. Yan ang allowed ng standard at talagang dapat gamitin sa actual practice. In this particular problem, maaari natin gamitin yun kasi nga given yung stated rate, Okay, na 8%. Ito yung effective rate na gagamitin sa amortization. Okay, na 10% naman. Okay, gawin na lang natin. Una ang sabi dito, kailangan daw nating mag-prepare ng amortization table. So basically, dapat pamilyar pa rin tayo kung ano yung heading ng amortization table. So this is requirement number one. Na basically, nagsisimula yan ay sa date. Okay. And then we have the interest. Interest received. Ayan yung natanggap mo. We have interest income. Okay. And then afterwards, we have the amortization. And last column is the what we call carrying amount. Okay. Ayan. So, ang unang date natin is yung acquisition date. Na basically, January 1, 2020. Ang carrying amount natin is included na yung transaction cost kasi if you can remember ang measurement initially at financial ng financial asset is the fair value which is normally the purchase price plus the transaction cost that's the general rule okay so therefore yan yan 1,900,500 yan yung ilalagay nating amount sa original na carrying amount and then afterwards lilipas yung panahon okay ang amortization table ay ginagawa or piniprepare siya every interest payment date but for simplicity, nakalagay dito every annual or every year, I mean, every year. Okay, that's why ang kasunod nating date ay December 31, 2020 pa rin. Okay, how do we do that? First, dun sa interest received. Ang interest received ay galing dun sa face value multiplied by the stated rate in this particular problem, 8% nga. Therefore, the interest received is 160000 Okay, while the interest income is based on the carrying amount of 1,900,500 multiplied by the effective rate of 10%. Okay, so that's why it will be 190,050. At yung difference ng dalawa, okay, ng interest income at interest received, that would be the amortization amounting to 30,050. Na basically, ang gagawin mo sa amortization na yan, papunta sa carrying amount, you have to add because there is a discount. How do we know na meron discount? Kasi ang mas mababa yung yung kanyang ano, uh, carrying amount kaysa dun sa face value. So discount yan, kailangan mong pumunta dun sa face value. Kailangan mong pataasin dahil nga ang gusto mong maging sa dulo ay 2 million. That's why 30,050 plus the previous carrying amount of 1,900,500. Okay, so that would be how, how much? 1,930,550. Okay, at tutuloy tayo sa kasunod na taon. December 31, okay, 2021. Ang interest received malamang ay ganun pa rin. Kasi nga, hindi naman nababago yung base. Nga lang itong interest income natural na bago yung base, Ito na yung bagong carrying amount, mamultiply mo dun sa interest rate, effective interest rate, magiging siyang 193,055. Okay, na basically, ikukumpara mo nga dun sa interest received mo na 160,000 to get the amortization of 33,000. 
55. At iaad mo din nga doon sa dating clearing amount na 1,930,550. Okay? So that would be 1,963,605. Okay? Tumuli pa tayo. Pagdating naman ng December 31, 2022, syempre, last na po ata ito, ano? Okay? Mature on December 31, 2022, yung interest receipt ay ganun pa din naman. Okay? Nga lang itong interest income, pwede naman na i-multiply mo rin siya sa 10%. So tama din naman yun. Nga lang normally kung sakaling ano, kahulihang taon na, okay? Uh, for the sake of balancing figure, para kumbaga, sayaw at sa gusto mo, o kung pupunta ka dito, 2 million muna. Ang ibig kong sabihin pala, okay? Basically, uh, maaari kasing merong ano, counting error. Okay, rounding error. Pag last year, ina-adjust na lang doon. Kasi syempre, maaaring yung factor ay hindi naman kumpleto. Tsaka inherently, dahil nga unending yung mga rate, okay, sa pahuli, nagkakaroon ng counting discrepancy. Dito talaga siya ina-adjust. Ang ibig ko sabihin, pwede naman na i-multiply mo nga ito ng 10% yung effective rate. Pero mas maganda, gawin mo na lang siyang balancing figure. Okay, to get my point, okay, mas maganda ikumpara na natin yung 2 million doon sa previous balance. Therefore, i-minus natin yung 2 million doon sa previous balance. So, we will get 36,395. Okay? And then afterwards, ito, i-add na lang natin dun sa 160,000. So, naka-negative yung sign. So, therefore, minus na lang. So, we will get 196,395. Para kung baga magsakto. Okay? Tama, so, pagka ito ang ginawa natin. Ang ibig sabihin, 1,963,605 multiply by 10%. Supposedly, ito ang gagamitin natin dito. Okay? 196,360 nga lang Iba ang ginawa natin Para kumbaga Magbalansi siya dun sa Sa kahulihang amount Sa 2 million Yung face value niya At the end of the Bond terms ba diba? Kasi nga Okay may rounding error Okay paulit-ulit na Ayan So ganyan po yung approach natin And then afterwards That's the requirement number 1 We go with requirement number 2 Ang sabi dito Journal entries So okay, journal entries For 2020, 2021, and 2022 Na basically Madali lang siya Kung sakaling meron ka ng table Simulan natin nun sa acquisition date Okay 2020 January 1 So basically Namili ka ng bonds Dun mo siya binili So you are going to debit investment In Investment Okay Investment in bonds so, Mali pa spelling natin So amounting to 1,900,000 Okay, 500 And you are going to credit cash For that same amount Okay That's it Pagdating ng December 31 What will happen? There will be an interest payment So you are going to debit cash Okay, 160,000 And you are going to credit interest income Kasi nga kikita sa pagkakataong ito ng interest Okay, annual naman ang bayaran Every December 31 Kaya simple lang yan Okay, other than that There will be an amortization Yung 30,050 Na basically the entry would be Debit investment Okay, investment in bonds Amounting to 30,050 And you are going to credit Interest income Okay Amounting to 30,050 Yung iba ang ginagawa Pinapagsama na sa end rate Itong dalawang to So basically Magiging entry Debit cash 160,000 Debit investment in bonds 30,050 And credit interest income 190,050 Pwede naman po yun ano, okay. Pero tayo Mas maganda Paghihiwalayin mo Kasi may mga pagkakataon talaga Mas maganda makita Magkahiwalay sila Lalo lalo na kung komplikado Yung problem Okay Kaya ako uh, Gusto ko hiwalay Ang Ah uh, Uh, interest received Yung pagtanggap mo ng interest Tsaka yung amortization Okay Next 2021 Effective po yun Yung ano ah, Paghiwalay kapag komplikado Pero pag ito simple Mas madali Sanang ipakita Kung magkasama na Pero mas maganda Isang alam natin Yung hinihiwalay Okay 2021 December 31 What will be our entry We are going to debit cash 160,000 And we credit interest income Paulit-ulit po ito Okay Amounting to 160,000 And we are going to debit investment in bonds Okay Amounting to 33,055 And credit Okay, interest income Investment Lagi nila akong maling sa spelling ng investment Okay, interest income Amounting to 33,055 Okay, yan po yung dalawang magiging entry natin Pagdating ng 2021 And then afterwards, magpunta natin sa 2022 O oh, basically, okay Magkakaroon tayo ng cash receipt Because of interest So we debit cash for 160,000 And we credit interest income pa rin Okay 
amounting to 160,000. Then afterwards, magkakaroon tayo ng entry for amortization of investment. So, we debit investment in bonds amounting to 36,000, okay, 395, and we credit interest income. Ayan, amounting to 36,395. Pero dahil ito'y last year na, no, ating transaction, basically, yan ay babayaran na sa atin. So, sa kahuli-hulihan, there will be a payment, debit to cash, to us, ano, payment to us, for 2 million, and we credit what? Investment. Okay, investment in bonds, amounting to 2 million also. Okay, so after that, lahat ng entry ay nagawa na natin using effective interest method. So yun lamang at maraming salamat.